Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for Red Blue Teams on Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we will go through some basic code walkthrough of the process token dumper which we saw in the last video. Okay, so we've seen that the token contains a ton of information, right? And in the last video, I've shown you how we can get some of that information uh, and how we could use it to understand more about the process in question. Now, in this video, I'm going to take up a subset of some of those information which we have found and go a little bit more in depth into how everything works. Okay, so the first thing which we mined was the token user. Now, basically, this is nothing but the user account associated with the access token of the process. Now, if you look at the structure, we see that the token user structure contains a SID and attribute structure in turn, which is nothing but a pointer to a SID and a D word, which is the attributes. Now, according to the documentation, if we go to the documentation here, the attributes is basically left blank for the token user structure. So we can clearly see it says there are currently no attributes defined for user SIDs, right? So all we are interested in is getting the SID and then converting it probably into something which is readable, right? So let's actually jump into the code. Now I've already discussed a lot of this code before, but just so we are all on the same page, I check if I have SE debug privileges. If not, we use shell uh, execute ex to go ahead and relaunch ourselves. After that, we try and get a handle to the process. We try first with maximum allowed and for protected processes, this would fail. So we use process query limited information to get a handle to them. Once we get a handle, we get the handle of the process token. And from that point on, we start dumping information. So the first thing we will look at is dump token user. Let's actually go there. There we go. Now, as we've seen before, we are going to be calling get token information API and pass it whatever information we require. So in this case, we say, hey, we need token user information, right? And of course, we allocate appropriate space and pass all of that, right? So I'm going to leave that to you to look at the API documentation. Now, once get token information returns the info, we use print SID details to print the output out. So let's go there. Here it is. Now, as we've seen in previous videos, we use convert SID to string SID to go ahead and print the string equivalent of the SID. And after that, we do a lookup account SID to go ahead and get the domain name and the account name, right? And we print both of these. Fantastic. So if we looked at a quick demo, We actually launch an elevated prompt. Let's get the PID. So for that we would, uh, let's launch Process Explorer so we can find interesting PIDs. <clears throat> so as an example, let's actually look at the command.dhc, right, which we've invoked. Uh, PID is 5348. So let's go in here. 5348. Let's do a quick more. 
Okay. So we can clearly see that in dump token user, we have obtained the SID, right? This is this long value over here. And the SID type uh, is basically a user SID, of course. And then we also printed the account information, right? So here is the machine name and here is the username. So if we kind of go back in here, we also have a call to sit type. So let's actually look at what that is. Okay. So we do a simple type check for the SID, right? We have other user, it's a group SID. Uh, it's a domain SID, whether it's an alias, whether it's a well-known group, blah, 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 right? A uh, lot of possibilities. And this gives us the information that this SID is nothing but a user SID, right? Very important. Fantastic. So this is how we can dump the token user information. Uh, let's go back to the slides. Okay. Now token groups. Now these are nothing but group SIDs which are associated with the token. Now if you look at the structure, we of course have group count. This is really nothing but the number of groups. And then we have those individual groups which are of type SID and attributes one after the other. Right? Now as we've already noticed, we have the SID and the attributes, right? If you look at it, the SID and attribute structure is right here and this contains a pointer to the SID and the attributes. Now in the case of token groups, the attributes can be one or more of these, right? Which is uh, SE group enabled as an example, right? The SID is enabled for access checks when the system performs an access check, it checks for access allowed, blah, blah, blah. So this really gives us some idea about how is that, uh, you know, group SID getting used when we do access checks and you know whether it is a mandatory integrity SID, so on and so forth, right? So this is again very interesting information which we can get. So now let's go back and look at the code. Okay, so the groups are over here, dump token groups. Now, once again, we call get token information, pass it token groups. And once we get all of the different group information, we go through a simple loop. And for each group, we print out the info, right? So of course, we're going to print out the SID details for the group and the SID attributes. And again, the SID details is something we've already seen, right? This is the function. We converted it to a string. We look up the domain name and the account name. So this is something we've already seen. And then you have SID attributes, which as we just discussed, could be any one of these, right? SE group enabled, group enabled by default, blah, 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 right? Again, do not worry too much at this point about, you know, each of these attributes and how they come in for different access checks and all of that. We will come to all of that in later videos. Right now, what I'm trying to do is to have you guys get a hang of how to, you know, open processes, get token information, parse those structures, and get an overall high level understanding of what is there inside of them, right? As we move along in the series, we will jump into more details of individual structure members and all of that, depending on how applicable it is for red teaming and for our purpose, right? So Windows internals is really an ocean and uh, you know we have to be very selective uh, yet logical about the way in which we cover everything, right? So I'm trying to strike a balance here. Okay, so there you go, token groups. Fantastic. Uh, let's actually run the program. We already run it, so we can just go up and see how this looks like. There we go. Right, so we have the token group. And if you notice, it says SID type, SID type group, a group SID. 
the account which says desktop blah 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 that's the kind of the domain name slash none now you may see none and you'll actually see this in a lot of places if you notice uh, the token primary group is also none uh, what is this really now typically this is actually added to local tokens uh, whenever there is no domain controller in the picture right so keep that in mind I've seen a lot of people get confused with the none right right now all of this stuff is happening locally there isn't any domain controller right so that is where none is specified and of course there are other interesting things like everyone and all of that uh, which is also something which is quite interesting which is this is uh, something which gets added uh, to the groups of every user uh, pretty much and this includes everything apart from anonymous tokens right so some of these little small subtle points uh, aren't very important at this stage but we'll pick them up you know as we move along okay great so we can see how the SID attributes mentions, you know, different attributes here as well. So as an example, we can see uh, this one, you know, a mandatory integrity label SID, right? This tells us that uh, this process is actually running at a high integrity level. And if you notice the attributes include SE group integrity and SE group integrity enabled, right? Interesting. So this is how we can get all the different group SIDs, uh, pass the different attributes and get information about them from the process token. Let's go back. Okay, now finally, the third thing which I wanted to show you was token privileges. Now, this is something we've been battling with right from the start, right? SE debug privilege and all of that. So in this case, when we, you know, use get token information, we get back a token privileges structure, which basically contains, you know, a count of the total number of privileges available, regardless of whether they are enabled or disabled. And of course, after that, you have uh, an LUID and attributes structure, which gets repeated as many times as the number of privileges available, right? Now, what does this LUID and attribute structure contain? It contains an LUID. Uh, an LUID is nothing but, you know, a 64-bit number on the system with which we can uniquely identify the specific privilege in question. And then the attribute, primarily what we deal with, is it enabled or disabled? Now, how do we work with this? Well, we pick up the LUID and we actually call lookup privilege name and this ends up giving us the name of the privilege such as SE debug privilege, shutdown privilege, right, TCB, blah, 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 uh, all the stuff we've seen before. And of course, just the privilege name isn't sufficient. We need to know if it is enabled or disabled and that information is available in the attributes member right which is a d word fantastic so let's jump right into the code i'm going to go back and i'm going to go to the privileges now there are other smaller things here you know which you can look at uh, most of them are simple i'm trying to deal with the more complicated parts here okay so as I mentioned, we call get token information, pass in token privileges, and once we get that for the entire list of privileges, we look up the privilege name and we print it, and then we check if the privilege has been enabled or not, right? You could even check if it is typically enabled by default or not, I've kind of left that out. I just want to know if it is enabled or disabled. And this is something we can see here, right? If you notice most privileges, even if they are available, are typically disabled by default. And you only have some very basic privileges enabled by default, such as the change notify privilege, you know, create global privilege, etc. 
Now, rest of the privileges are available and we can turn them on at runtime as we've seen before, right? So, apart from this, let's look at some of the other output. Now the token type we've already discussed could be primary, could be, you know, a delegation. And of course, dumping whether the token is elevated. In this case, the token is elevated because this is an admin prompt. Uh, now another interesting thing which we've seen before is the token user and the token owner. Now token user is, is basically uh, the user or specifically the SID, uh, which was actually responsible when the process was created, which is when the process was created, this was the user on behalf of whom the process got created, right? That is what token user contains. And token owner is really now this process, whatever, uh, you know, objects and everything it is going to create, who ends up becoming the owner, right? That is the token owner which of course because this is an elevated prompt running as admin is built-in administrators right and this is something you can read about in the documentation as well there we go right token owner contains default owner sid which will be applied to newly created objects right uh, so this distinction is important between user and owner right user is always on behalf of whom the process got created and owner is now uh, the uh, the the kind of user on behalf of which the new objects which this process would create uh, you know would be owned by right now if there was no elevation as we've seen before the user and the owner remains the same so if we go ahead and launch a regular command prompt no elevation let's figure out the pid we can click here and then select the window so the pid is 2312 and if you notice now the token user is vivek and the token owner is also vivek right the same exact set so keep this in mind. This is uh, something which is interesting as well to take note of. Now, there are many other interesting fields. As I said, the idea here was to introduce you to some of the more interesting, important ones, which we will probably end up using more frequently than others. Uh, I would highly recommend that if you get the time, try and go through every single piece of information you can mine uh, from a token, right? You have a ton of options still remaining and print these out. So you have a very good understanding of what is available in the token. So that's all guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, please recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.